Hey guys, so we're going to be building out the register form in our React Native app today, and we're going to need to install two dependencies for that. So I'm inside the package JSON for the app, and we need to add ab slash common at 1.0. So this is our shared package that we're going to use, and that's going to have the yup schema in it that we want to use. And we also need to install formic. Now go ahead and add this to your package.json, and then you can just come over here and do yarn add formic. Um, make sure you're actually in the app directory when you do that as well. Um, and I'll go ahead and install both the app um, or the common and also Formic as well. And then you're going to want to go ahead and just do yarn start to start up your app. Um, and it should look like this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this register view. Um, so the one that we built with our uh, app or for the website. And we're pretty much just going to copy it over and then change it up a bit because Formic works fine in uh, React Native. We need to do a, a little bit of a tweak. And then also uh, we need to switch out Ant Design with a React Native components. All right, so we're gonna just copy this UI folder over to our register folder. Um, so now we have this register view um, inside of our app. So let's go ahead and start switching stuff over. So I'm gonna close this. We don't need to get anything from Ant Design, so I'll get rid of that. We don't need any of this form stuff. Um, we're gonna be adding an import field um, in a little bit. Um, we don't need an outer form at all. Um, there's not really a, a compatible component in React Native. You can just uh, wrap it with a view if we want to. So call this view, call this view. And then we can import view from uh, React Native. Um, so we don't need the form component from Formic. The form values are going to stay the same. Um, the props where we have to submit are going to be the same as well. Um, our field, we're still going to need an email field. Uh, we don't have to worry about We can add an icon if we wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about adding an icon to this. We'll have an email placeholder. Same here. Um, type password. Uh, the type is going to be a little bit different because how React Native works is they actually call it like a, a hidden field, but we'll get to that. And we'll get rid of this. And we don't really need a form item. There we go. And we're just going to use this button, same one that we used in uh, our register connector. So from React Native Elements, there we go. And let's do the same import. All right. And our connector over here, I'm just going to go ahead and real quickly switch it out and render the register view. And like we did before, I'm going to have a submit, and then we're going to have just a dummy submit for now. And this is just going to console log the values. And we'll get rid of the import here. Um, and we need to actually return. So return null. And I'm going to say async here. All right, so now this is a valid function to pass to the submit. All right, so we have our button here. Now we don't actually add text like right here, right? We need to actually we just render a button like this and we don't need any of these things at all right here. Um, we just say title and we're gonna call it submit. Now because we're not using a form, Formic doesn't know when we actually submit this. So we're gonna have to actually specify the on press. So whenever someone presses the submit button, that's how we know we're submitting. So I'm gonna say const handle submit, and we're getting this from the props. And we're just gonna pass that to on press. So handle submit. Now this type is not really compatible at all. So we're just gonna say as we're gonna cast it. And that'll be good. Um, and then down here, I'm not sure what it's having a problem with. Uh, oh, we need to, uh, it looks like we don't have our library. We need to add a library or include ES6 in your lib option. So let's copy this. 
TSGS 2015. And if we go to our TS config um, for our app, I don't even, we don't have any libraries right now. So lib. We can add uh, ES 2015. We'll just say ES5. All right, and this this should go away. Let's go ahead and restart TypeScript. And I think the form itself is actually uh, pretty good now, and it still doesn't like it. We're gonna have to add. Let's just see what libraries we use in our website and just copy those. All right, so we're using ES6, DOM, and async uh, iterable. So we're probably gonna need this when we do Apollo stuff, so let's go ahead and add it now anyway. I'm just gonna take ES6. I don't think we need DOM stuff, maybe we do. Uh, I can add that later if we do. And let's go ahead and add the shared component. So that's gonna be up to shared and we, again, can pretty much copy what we have over here and make some small tweaks. So I'm gonna copy it from our website and paste it in the input field. So now in this place, we're gonna to have to do things a little bit differently. And the reason for that is uh, how Formic works is it uses uh, on change. So uh, this field thing right here has an on change um, or a handle change, if you will. Um, if we do field.handle, I guess it's on change. Oh, that makes sense because we were passing it directly in. But anyway, so you pass this to your input and that's what handles the change. And every time you type, it's gonna call this function and it knows what the value or which field to update based on the name. Um, but there's actually not a name on the input for React Native. That just does not exist. And by the way, we're not gonna use ant design. So for the input, we're going to be using the React Native Elements input, and they have uh, a nice little error input as well, where we can have error style error message. So we're gonna use this, and we'll just render that, and we'll just copy this out for now, or comment it out, and we can grab this import. So we have to turn this thing into an actual uh, component, or class component. So we're gonna say class input field extends react dot, and we can, I'm not just gonna make it a regular component because I think we're gonna render a lot anyway. Um, here's our return value. So we need to clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna call this render. Here are our props right here. I'm going to grab the field props, any, and the prefix, is, oh, we don't have to worry about prefix for this, but we want a name, which is a string. All right, so you can get rid of this bit right here where we were specifying the types before. So here's our render function. I think we might have too many curlies. We'll have to change that in a second. So we're gonna get these things from our props still. This dot props. Um, and we have one, too many curlies. We don't need this form item and all right, it doesn't have input from React Native Elements. That's kind of weird. I am in, yep, I'm in the app. Um, that's, I don't know why it doesn't have an input field from that. Worry about that in a second though. Um, so all right, so we're now using uh, this as our type definition right here. So we're gonna take any um, of the Formic stuff and then we're also gonna accept a name and so this is how we, we know what field to update is the name that the person passes in uh, to this component. And I think it's, sh actually I don't even think we need to um, ask for the name because I think it's gonna be in the field itself. So actually we might come back and change this, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, we're gonna have our own custom on change um, that's gonna handle this. And also I don't even think it's called handle change on uh, in React Native, it's all right. So instead of using on change, we're going to use on change text for React Native. It looks like both are available on the text input, but I always see people using on change text. Not really sure what this one is about. And I also figured out what was going on with the input field that was not showing up. So we are on beta, or this is on beta five. 
So I'm going to go ahead and install beta instead of using what we currently have. So we sync up with these docs, and this is probably what's going to be uh, the future of React Native Elements. So if you'd like to do that as well, you can do add yarn add React Native Elements at um, and then the version. This is the current beta for me. Uh, if you want to, you can also change the version, and then you'll get different docs if you want to follow that. Um, the other thing is TypeScript comes bundled. The TypeScript types come bundled with this package now. So you want to make sure and also remove the types for React Native Elements. Uh, and then sure enough, it does not uh, have any problems loading it. All right. So we have this on change. We can rename it to on change text, and it's going to take text, which is a string, and it's going to call this dot props dot form dot set field value. All right. Well, actually, I should destructure this a bit because we need a few things from the props. So Formic is passing us this form, which gives us a value called set field value, um, and so that's what we're going to be using to set whenever we type change the value. So um, so this dot props, we're gonna get the form, we're going to get set field value, and we're also going to get field name. All right, so set field value, name, text. So Formic is both giving us the function to update it, and whenever you get any kind of field that's not just a regular text field, uh, you'll use this method as well. So here we're basically creating our own update method here. So we take the new text and we set the failed value based on the name that we're passed in. Um, so now we just need to call that. So on change text, we're going to call this dot uh, change on change text. So whenever I type, it's going to call this function and update the formic value. Uh, the other thing we have, there's honestly we don't really need anything from, uh, I guess we need the value as well. So value is going to be field dot value. Uh, I don't think there's, I don't know if there's an on blur. It uh, looks like there is, so we can say field dot on blur. Uh, and then after that, we can display our error message. So right now, we'll get rid of this part and we're going to say um, error message. We'll display that. Uh, and then we're going to say if there's an error message. Well, actually, we don't even have to just, if there's an error message. It should only show. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to create that object up here. So I'm going to say error style and color red. reason why I'm creating the object up here, and then I'm just going to put it in here, is error style. Error style. Is now we we are not creating that object every time this renders. So we're creating it once up here, and then every time this renders, we're just passing it in. And then lastly, the placeholder. Um, this is something we should get from just the uh, props here. So I'm just going to dot, 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 props. Um, the other thing we might, and we can get rid of this, the other thing we might get from the props is, for example, uh, whether this is a password field or not, so we might need to secure it. Um, all right, so this looks good. We should be able to just reload this now, and maybe something will render. Now, back to our register view real quickly. So you'll notice I am specifying the type here as a password. Uh, that's not how it works in React Native. So if I want it, so why don't I just get rid of this real quick, and you'll see why uh, I need to do this. If I don't specify that, I'm just going to type plain text, and it's viewable. So in React Native, there is secure text entry. So this is a Boolean you can set to true or false. And this will allow you to uh, hide the text or not. So this is good for passwords. So we can use this field um, and pass it in. So we can say true, for example. I haven't saved this yet. So if we come over here and we type in the password, you see it's visible. And so that's what we want to avoid. Um, Handle Blur does not work with React Native. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. I didn't think Handle Blur worked with React Native. So uh, if we come back to our input field over here, we can just get rid of the on blur. Um, so give that a save, and then also save over here. And now our text is going to be hidden, and our email is going to be hidden as well. 
All right, so what I want to do is now try submitting. Awesome, it tells me this password's not valid, or this email's not valid. Um, that was kind of interesting. Okay, I think that was just a lag. All right, so now we get the same thing for the password. And we can type and we get our error message. I can fix this, turn this into a good pat email, I mean. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can kind of like push this down a little bit because it's kind of mashed to the top. So right here, we set the width and whatnot. I don't think that's doing anything. I'm just gonna say margin top is gonna be like 200 and hopefully it'll be pushed down a little bit. There we go. I don't know why we have this random space here and not here. In the next video, we'll go ahead and style this up to make it look a little bit nicer. But for now, we have our register form working and we'll also, the next step is actually use the controller that we used before and actually uh, submit this to our server now.